Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name's Kyle and a lot of you have been asking for the full trailer walkthrough now that we've got the build done. If you didn't already see those videos, I've got a playlist for the trailer build out, but let's go ahead and take a look at the, uh, the finished product. All right, now, first things first, this is, this is like art, right? You never actually finish art, it's just kind of still in the process. This trailer is not finished, but this is how we've been using it now for the last month or so on site, and I'm sure it'll continue to evolve as things go. And I'll point out some of the things that I already know I need to do when I figure out how to do it. But we'll start, for the people that have not seen any of my trailer build videos in the past, this is a custom Bravo, Bravo Star, it's an eight foot wide, 18 foot long. It's got 16K axles and uh, it's seven foot tall. So I tried to get the biggest kind of box, you know, trailer I could. It's got spray foamed walls. It's got the finished uh, white, I don't know what the material is. It's like an aluminum. And these front cabinets were custom built into this trailer. I did have another big long uh, shelf over here and I didn't like it, so that's what led me to this trailer build series. And just so you guys know that haven't seen it, I mean, these are just some big open shelves. I keep the table saw and some of my larger boxes down here, like uh, SDS rotary hammer, band saw, the LA-180 Stabila, the 350, you know, and just some of those bigger tools. I got all my lifting straps and up in this front corner, that's where the inverter is, deep cycle marine battery so I actually can run things like LED lights. So right now this is plugged in on 110 and this is what we get on site if we don't have any power. It's not bright, but it's, it's easy enough to come in here and do, you know, do what you need to do at least and get your tools. So that's kind of nice. I know a lot of people are gonna say, hey, do you have solar power? No, I don't. I don't have solar power. And the one thing I'll say right away is you're not going to see any chargers out here because we don't typically charge on site. I do keep up here a specific charger for each brand of battery that I do have in case I have to do an emergency charge. But regardless, let's get into this thing. This is the first set of cabinets I built. And you're going to notice the packout rack here where you've got random packouts. But let's start in the front. This is where the Fest tools go. They just kind of tuck away in here. And this is set up for the standard size Festool sustainers. And like I said, this is where I keep the chargers. It's not clean. I don't have a good solution yet for the charging if I needed to. Um, and then we've got the power station from Milwaukee, uh, HKC55 down there. And then in other Festool stuff, we've got Drill Impact and their multi-tool, which is really nice. So you'll see here, this is where we keep our tool belts. Greg and I thought, let's put them right inside the door. That's one of the first things you're gonna grab, probably one of the last things you're gonna take off. So it just made sense to put this stuff right here. The pack out, originally I was gonna put this all, a pack out stack here and one on the other side, which we'll get to. But to be honest, these two, these two are completely empty. And I'll, I'll get to why they are, but I do keep some tools here. Most of the tools are gonna be later on in the trailer build. But, you know, impact wrenches. I got kind of one for each different task. I don't always need the super high torque, but sometimes I need more than a smaller impact. I do, however, try to keep half inch. So they're all half inch. That way I've got one set of bits or sockets. I don't have to have different size sockets. You know, we've got just random fasteners. I don't need to show you guys probably everything. But what really, what I was getting to was I used to have more tools and things in these other packouts, but then Milwaukee came out with these drawers and I'm loving them. So these used to be in a packout. However, it's so much easier to just open a drawer, get what you need. So here we've got kind of all of our, our layout tools. So when we're gonna go lay out a building, boom, everything's right here. That's kind of nice. That's actually just some camera gear. Um, they lock up real nice, but having these drawers for all your random smaller items, keeping things organized and extremely handy when you do need them. I love it. And going down the road, boom, lock it into place. It's not coming out. Now I will say, I forget that all the time and I've not had one of these open because as you can see, there is a little bit of a lock on it. I take out all these drawers and I screwed through the thick part of the pack out right into 
I mean, right into the shelf. So it's not going anywhere. Uh, you guys know we love our safety at RR Buildings. So each, each of us, Greg and I have our separate pack out and it's got all of our safety harness gear, our retractable, and we can just take that right out up on the lift and go to the roof. One of the things that I do need to improve upon is I've got this open shelf here with just some randoms. So we've got like the blower. I just go ahead and take it apart so it fits in here better. Caulk gun. These things just don't fit in a good storage solution that I have. Track saw, bigger track saw. Right now they're just kind of sliding in here and you know, it's working out okay. Whatever, it is what it is. Like I said, originally this was all gonna be Milwaukee, Milwaukee pack out. Not because anything other than I feel like right now Milwaukee has the best storage solution, especially with the addition of these, uh, these drawers. But this is all the pads loads. We've got our framing nailers, one for Greg, one for me. Different trim guns, 18 gauge, 16 gauge straight, 16 gauge angled. And then up here, this is where we mount the cut hub miter saw. So you guys have probably seen the cut hub. If not, I did a video on that as well. It's a great solution. I know those guys and they're doing really well. It seems like they're really selling a lot of the cut hubs. People are finding the value in them. They're not cheap, but nothing good ever is. But we can just unscrew these little tabs here and take the miter saw off, go take it out in the cut hub, and then it just mounts back here and travels. I'd said I had some things that I need to fix or at least improve upon, levels being one of them. I know FastCap makes a couple things that you can mount like little blocks and then they twist and turn. So like, like I might probably put something up on the ceiling so I can mount them up there. I just haven't done it. I haven't had time. Hence why we've got the Stabila, you know, holy grail of all the different levels you need all sitting back here by my cords and hoses, which I don't even use that much, but you just gotta have them. You just gotta have them. Over to the other side, more hoses, more cords, ladder storage. I can put my ladder right here too. I don't have, it must be at the job site right now. And then one of the big, the big positives in this build was the cut hub because I used to have those boxes that I had to pull it out. I needed a lot of room. Now I can just come in here, remove this uh, old ax handle and pull, pull a cut hub out. It works out really good. I don't have to have my back door open, which I used to have to have. I can do it all from right inside. I got a nice little storage location for my cut hub accessories. And, and then we get to this, this stack here, which I think is really cool. Andy Glass, Glass Impressions. I found him on Instagram. He makes these kits. So it doesn't have to be just Milwaukee. You can be DeWalt. You can have sustainers from Festool, rigid boxes. He will, this is the cool part, he will CNC router out these plates so that your storage solution is gonna sit right in there. And then these drawers have either a 50 or 100 pound like pulling strength on them. So not once have I had any of them come out during travel. I keep thinking it's gonna happen one of these days, it just hasn't. But this is super nice, man, because I can come in here and if I need a tool, first off, pack out, they don't have the best labeling options. So right now I've just got this blue tape. I'm sure there's something out there that you guys know, so drop a comment if you know some great way of labeling your pack out. But I can just open up, get the tool I need. Everything is nice and organized in some, uh, some foam, so that makes it nice. Yes. I know people might say, dude, the foam's a waste of time. You could fit 10 times more tools in there if you didn't have the foam. That's probably true. I don't, I don't really care. I think it's awesome and I like having everything just right where it belongs because when I come in here and I see that, I know that I'm missing a tool, that it's somewhere. You know, while we're talking about that, this trailer was usually a mess when it was the old trailer. Now that we have everything built we have a place for everything. I don't think one day we've gotten done with the day and just left a mess in the trailer because we know if there's something on a shelf, if there's a pack out that's sitting somewhere, it probably has got a tool somewhere. I don't know if you guys want to see what, we've, what we're rocking right now. I've got uh, M18 and M12 multi-tool drill for Milwaukee. This is the kind of tough one way up here. But if you just need to get in something real quick, I've got another heavy duty impact and the Makita impacts, or sorry, these are the uh, like Versa clutches for doing our metal roofs. We really like those. 
Uh, what else do we got? This is kind of our specific metal cutting tool pack out. So shear, nibbler, and then a single cut shear, double cut shear, nibbler, router, rivet, gun, stapler, a couple different sawzalls, super sawzall, and then this is the newer, it's a smaller sawzall. We usually grab the super sawzall. It has orbital and just a little bit more power, I think, behind it. Oh, and then this is where we're going to keep our circ saws. A couple six and a half, that's what we like to grab. And then we also keep the uh, seven and a quarter Makita rear handle. Well, another thing I want to comment on, you might be thinking, okay, how does this balance out? I haven't gone across a scale yet. I do have access to a scale, my father-in-law's farm. And one of these days when they're running corn out of a bin, I'm gonna try to swing by there and check to see how each side balances out. If I've got way too much weight on one side versus the other. I think it's probably fairly close. I don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal. It doesn't feel off and it doesn't sway driving down the road. But here we get into the larger pack out boxes. So, you know, the bigger tools, I could put some of these in a smaller pack out, but I just thought it made sense to put all my Bosch in one since I don't have a ton of Bosch that I use every day. But we got the planer, the bulldog, and a grinder. These are a little bit more of a pain to get out to, so I don't know if a sliding shelf or something, I don't know what the option is, but this is one of those things that I feel like I could do better on. I just haven't figured out what to do here. I could change these locations, and maybe if Milwaukee puts out like a single storage drawer, I could get away with that because that would probably be pretty darn handy. I just bring them out and then get the tools I need out. These have got all of our different nailers, staple gun, roofing nailer, and then a big, the big joist gun, which honestly I don't use that much anymore because something like this new Makita here that is just a total beast, tons of power, and if we're drilling big holes, it's got the anti-kickback. I just don't need that huge joist drill to do that anymore. So it just, you know, I don't use it that much, but I guess the one time I take it out of the trailer, I'll probably need it. Here we've got mainly a hardware bin. So this is nuts and bolts, uh, structural fasteners for trusses, brackets, and anything else we find that we need. Something a little bit bigger than nails, which you'll notice at the bottom I didn't talk about. That's where, because the wheel well is back here, this doesn't go back any further. This is where we keep random fasteners, all of our different stuff just goes right on the bottom. So I think that worked out pretty good. Now for battery storage, what you see is really all we go through in a typical week. Usually a handful of Milwaukee's. We've got these uh, 48 tools. That's who does the uh, storage solution. And you can get whatever brand you guys want to rock. I've got Milwaukee, DeWalt. We've got two rows of Makitas. So rarely do I ever have to get into the back row. And then over here, kind of the larger batteries, the multivolt Metabos and the Flexvolt DeWalt's. So it's just kind of a nice handy thing. I can always add more rows as I go. I need to get maybe some Bosch Festool ones. That would be nice too. And then, uh, I don't know, I just thought this was kind of a cool little thing that that we made in here for the uh, Martinez, since this is kind of such a prized possession. It needed its own little spot to kind of show off, tuck it in. Nice. Here we've got the first aid kit. So right when you come in the door, we've got the first aid kit. It's in a pack out. Can't remember the guy's name. He makes these custom clips for the pack out and sends you out all the kind of things you need to make your own first aid pack out. And that just clips in right there. So that's kind of nice. Up here, once again, we've got just kind of your random fasteners. We've got a spot for all of our blades here. I think you can probably, that's pretty self-explanatory. It's just nails, you know, random stuff like that. I don't know. I could probably organize those bins a little better. And this is not even attached because when I did this, I thought, I don't know what I want to do. I'm just going to cut this piece so it's ready. And when I figure out the spacing, I can just screw it in, you know? And I guess I could comment on that. A lot of this uh, shelving was made in such a way that if I do change, if I want to make this bigger so that I can put a, another drawer case in here, it's all uh, pocket hole screwed and I could just take those pocket holes out and adjust the shelving. So I did think about that being an option or maybe something I would need to do down the road. And I wanted to at least kind of think through some of that. And then up here, this is just kind of a storage area where all of our different nailers can go in there, the pneumatic nailers. 
and then the 21 degree Milwaukee. You know, we've got the Pazload joist hanger, Pazload framer, jumbo nailer, and then the fully automatic stapler. Nice little spot for our lubricating oil. And these just kind of tuck in there. Not the best solution, but honestly, it works out pretty good. The big boy beam saw, that kind of has got to sit in its, uh, its own little cradle. And that just slides in there. And then this was kind of like dead space that it just kind of came out of nowhere. We didn't know we were going to do it, but we keep things like our sledgehammer. We can store our shovel and our post hole diggers down underneath here. Kind of keeps them, you know, keeps them from being cluttered. And then we've got our Stabila tripod. So that tucks in there real nice. That's basically it. There's a couple things that I know I need to work on. Uh, right now, we're just kind of storing the Stabila grade stick up here. You'll notice we've got our, our, I think it's nine foot. I don't know, it's for eight foot sheet goods and for four foot sheet goods. And it's got this little like bench top clamp. And so that just kind of holds it in place. I think I could do a little bit better, but honestly, going down the road, I haven't had any issues yet. I got to figure out something to do with my levels, maybe a good charging solution. And this space right here is the last thing that I've got to do back here. It's behind the, um, the pack out rack. And you'll see right now, I'm just using it to store my two uh, tripods for them cameras. If you guys got ideas for me, I know everybody's going to say, go check out Ron Polk. I have watched some of his videos, but I think the best way to, to make the thing better as it goes is just to use it to figure out what is inefficient and then make that change. But yeah, there you go. If you guys haven't, like I said, seen the build out, if you're interested in the process, I've got three videos up. I'll put those, uh, maybe I'll start the first one right up here. You can click on that link if you want and check that out. But a lot of you were asking for this final walkthrough, and although I don't think it's final, I don't think this is the last time or the final version of this trailer, uh, it's probably going to be like this for a little while, maybe till next winter. So we'll get a season under our belt, and we'll do this again maybe next year. So thanks for hanging out. Hopefully this was enjoyable. Hopefully it sparks a little bit of maybe motivation to go out and organize something that you have. If you do, share it with me, let me know, and we'll catch you guys on the next video.